Welcome to my new project of the 2015 Honda Fit series. Uh, this series is going to consist of me upgrading my uh, OEM audio system. I am going with the full Kenwood component based system. Uh, six and a half inch uh, two-way speakers in the doors, uh, new uh, Kenwood tweeters, and uh, two KSC SW11s underneath each of the front seats. The trickiest little sub-project here that I'm going to be working on for the Honda Fit uh, stereo upgrade is the wiring harness so I can interface an external amplifier and processor. Uh, I am going to be using the Metra kits uh, for the Honda uh, 70-1729, that is the uh, male connector here. And um, you also, uh, this would be very helpful if you, and it all depends too, if you're going to be keeping the stock head unit, which I will, I'm going to need the 71-1729, which is the female version of it. This is actually going to be going to the head unit, and then uh, this piece is going to be connecting to the vehicle harness. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see, that this connector comes fully populated. Uh, this one does not. You will have to add the some extra wires in order in order to retain your steering wheel controls uh, shout out to fiberpunk on uh, fit freak forums uh, thank you so much for doing all the pre-work this is making this little project a lot easier for me uh, kudos to you i'll go one step further here since i don't want to be I want to make it as modular as possible uh, since I don't want to cut into the factory harness. Uh, I got myself two of these. They are 16 gauge wire, it are 12 pin Molex connectors. So it's got a male and a female end. It really doesn't matter. The pins are not uh, uh, exposed or anything. So what I will do is I will use the, this connector. Uh, one side will be on the female side here. Uh, for the output of the speakers, which will then go to my processor. The processor will then feed uh, line out uh, outputs to the uh, external amplifier and then from that point the external amplifier will have to go to the vehicle harness uh, which is here and then I will use the other end of this um, Molex connector to connect to just the speakers uh, outputs that go into the vehicle that way I if I ever decide if I wanted to um, disable the external uh, processor for whatever reason, I can uh, just use the second one that I have here to bypass it. But I don't think I'm going to be needing to do that. Uh, and it's uh, going to be pretty straightforward, hopefully. And the other part that I'm going to be, uh, again, thank you again, Fiberpunk. I will be using your picture here. Uh, this is about as clear as it can be. But what also uh, is going to be helping me with this is that I was able to obtain the service document for the uh, audio connectors in here. So now I can get a, try and get as good of a picture as I can. Uh, this is the pinouts, and then I have the whole uh, gamut of all the different um, uh, pin outputs here. So these colors actually match what uh, your pictures have. And uh, from here, just so everyone knows, that is if you're looking at this connector in this direction with that um, latch piece on top. And if you were to look at this uh, connector, it would have to be with that latch piece on top facing this way. It is not looking at it this way. Now, I don't know how good of a picture I can get out of here, uh, but this is how the pins are in the male connector. Um, you got, I don't know if you can see it here, but the way to remove them is actually with a, a Molex removal tool. Uh, what you're essentially doing is if you see that little tab there, you need to push that tab out so you can pull the uh, pin out of the housing. Um, you could decide to melt the bridge here, which it works too if you just want to sacrifice one of them. But uh, since I bought two of these things here, I'm going to try and save them both just in case I needed a spare for whatever reason. But uh, if I do screw up the uh, pin, I can always, you know, borrow it from the uh, other connector I had as a spare. Completed the transplant of the necessary wires so I don't lose my steering wheel controls. Um, I will uh, just show you really quickly and I'll get some good high resolution photos so you can see it. But uh, now this uh, matches the stock wiring harness from the Honda Fit. And what I did since this particular uh, the female end is fully populated. I taped off the wires that will not be used in my application. Uh, unfortunately, the color coding does not match 
uh, the stock wiring harness, so I'm just going to have to eyeball it, meaning uh, make sure that the uh, the positions of the wires match the positions on the harness that I'm creating uh, so I don't mess anything up. And here's the completed uh, wiring harness that I created so I can interface my external processor and, a, and amplifier uh, into the factory harness without cutting it. Uh, I did leave the unused wires uh, on the connector. I didn't want to go and start ripping it out here, but I used it to stiffen the harness here. Uh, taped everything up so everything's nice and neat. Verify that if, uh, the continuity that of all the pins that I have here that are in the correct positions from the female end over to the male end. Uh, so each of those pins are in there, as you can see. Uh, I've also uh, run the wires down to the 12 pins and made my own legend. Uh, so it's easy enough to figure this out. It's like So this one corresponds with this coming from the head unit, and this is going to connect to the OEM uh, factory harness in the vehicle. So this is the guy that I made, you know, what the color is on the 12 pin connector, what the function is, and then the pin uh, position that it's connected to for the vehicle harness, just for reference. A word of caution when you are installing these uh, adapter rings into the uh, vehicle, there's a few modifications that you have to do to it. Namely that uh, you need to countersink the mounting hole on the top here. And also be aware that this is uh, perfectly uh, round, but the one in the fit, the stock ones, they're actually compressed this way a little bit. So when you put the two lower tabs in there, you're going to have to put a little bit of force to push down to get this bolt to line up with the nut that's uh, inside the, the uh, car skin. And also since you're going to be uh, installing the speaker on top of it like so, um, there is really no need to put the screen on there. Uh, and unfortunately, the hardware that it comes with is a little too long. If you were to go and put this like so, if I can focus on it, you will see that it will go right through the back end, and that's not good, which means you're going to have to go and snip off three threads uh, so that you get something like this. That way it doesn't uh, poke through the edge and force the ring to come apart from the door. I've successfully removed the head unit from the dashboard. You do need to remove the meter trim and then the vent trim. There's two bolts on the top, one and two, and then there's a third bolt on the bottom that's pointing up. Uh, it's an eight millimeter nut. You remove those three and then a few clips around here and you should be able to remove it. You will need to unplug the passenger airbag indicator and the hazard light uh, wires and leave them off to the side here. Everything else you can get to the back of this uh, pretty easily. Uh, I'll see if I can get a good picture of it as I look past the camera. This is the connector that I'm concerned about. So this is what I'm going to disconnect and put my splice harness in. And uh, I'm covering this for a reason because I don't want my serial number or, or my VIN number all over the internet. So Now removing that connector here, uh, don't know how well I can get it back here, but I did, I did splice it in. Uh, it will ask you for the security code and what you basically have to do if you don't want to deal with that uh, once you, if you've plugged in everything correctly uh, what you do is you start the car it'll get a signal from the B can uh, from the CAN bus network and uh, you press and hold uh, power for about two seconds you'll get your standard warning and everything should be fine at least that's how it did uh, work for me Here's the final setup of the audio processor and the amplifier. Uh, tested it in the vehicle, it sounds great. Uh, now I'm going to have to mount it into the vehicle. Uh, this uh, LCQ-1 is gonna have to be mounted in the glove box uh, since I don't really have any other place to put it. Uh, this is gonna be mounted in a crevice above the uh, glove box there since it's such a small form factor and it, it does get a little warm but um, I am like in extremely impressed on how well it drives the new Kenwood speakers. Now moving on to the subwoofer installation and as you can see I removed the center console. Uh, I've done this before for the heated uh, seats and this is the wiring for it. Uh, you see the relays here. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess but uh, 
basically what I've done is that here's the power, uh, the ground and the speaker uh, inputs of, and the signal power, uh, power wire for both subwoofers. I gave myself a little bit of extra length since I'm going to uh, have to test fit it uh, outside the car first and then I can always cut it to length but then it'll run the th through the length of the channel here and then it will exit out the back here or I might try to find some way to um, put it on the side here inconspicuous and then these are the plugs for the subwoofers on each of the sides here uh, the seats will be right here where you can mount them underneath wanted to make note of a few settings that I did here so I changed the internal jumpers so I can connect the subwoofer channel to the main channel the front uh, left and right uh, and I also disabled the auto on feature uh, and kept the ground isolated what I'm going to be using is the remote in and remote out uh, uh, on the gray wire here or the accessory uh, wire that's uh, that's on the uh, ma master harness that's going to input about I think it's like 12 volts or it's even a little bit less to remote turn this on when the ignition is on and then remote out runs up around this harness through the uh, adapter that I made and then sends that signal to also turn on the amplifier. And finally the subwoofers will be connected here but since I have four uh, inputs for uh, the left and right subs uh, I'm going to have to get a splitter here in order to connect them all together, uh, which is a simple Radio Shack item. More progress today. was able to install the amplifier, uh, hide it inside the dashboard, I'll show you, uh, and uh, put all the wiring uh, harnesses, uh, taped them up, and uh, wire tied them out of the way. I still haven't put this in the glove box just yet. Uh, I made some uh, splitters so I can connect both of my uh, left and right channels, the inputs for the subwoofer, since that's what's going to be driving here. Uh, I did also run separate 10 gauge wire, one for the subwoofers here, and another one that's running for the processor and the four channel amplifier up above here. Uh, each will be fused at 20 amps, and uh, that'll, that should be more than enough. Uh, and now even though this is uh, being fed by 20 amps, I put a, they require a, a 2 amp fuse, but I put a 3 amp fuse, that was the smallest I could find. Uh, so that protects this particular unit. And finally, uh, the four channel amplifier is located up here. Uh, I just wire tied it out of the way, put some foam on it so it wouldn't rattle, and it does clear the glove box very easily. There's a little clasp, and uh, yeah, very inconspicuous. And then tied all the wires out of the way, added a, drilled a hole into the frame there, and added a ground. And then the yellow is the uh, main power wire. So neat as I can get it, and uh, everything is out of the way, nice and neat.